Hey everyone, my name is Athol and today I'd like to share a quick overview on default styles. Using default styles is one of the best things I've learned about in my time as an Android developer. They've been available forever and in this video we'll look at everything you need to get started with using them yourself. A default style is exactly what it sounds like. It's a style resource that you don't need to remember to apply to your views because it's done by default. They're great for helping you make sure that things look consistent across different screens in your app and at the same time reducing the amount of code that you and your team need to write. So we'll use Burger View as an example. It's a pretty simple widget, um, which can be configured to remove the lettuce. And just like Image View, you can change the source. We don't want to have to specify these properties every time we use Burger View for three reasons. Firstly, we don't want mistakes. So how easy and terrible would it be if we accidentally served a burger with lettuce? I don't want to think about it. Secondly, it's a waste of time. If we want the same style everywhere, why should we have to repeat ourselves? And finally, we want to be able to update our default burger easily. If we set view properties at each instance explicitly, we don't get that. So instead, we extract a style resource which includes the properties we want to apply everywhere. And this does solve some of our problems because at least now all the crucial values are defined in one place, so it's easier to update. But we can take it further and we want to take it further. If we want to use this style every time we use burger view, why do we have to keep saying so? This should be enough. Every time I use Burger View in my app, I want the system to apply the style for me. And this is where default styles come into play. We need some way of associating a view class with a style resource so that if we use this view, the system knows to apply this style. And the way we do this is with the default style attribute. For Burger View, the default style attribute is called Burger View style. We can find the default style attribute for any view by looking at its constructors. So if you can't remember what the default style attribute is for a particular view, click through to the source and you'll find it there. Now that we know which attribute to use, we can set our default style. In our app theme, we can set the burger view style attribute to the style resource that we defined earlier, and that's it. Specifying the default style attribute in our theme is what associates a view class with a style resource. So where we had this before, we've now got this, and the same attributes are set. This works for native components as well as widgets from App Compat, material design components for Android, and really any custom view as long as support for default styles is considered. The classic example is the button widget from the platform, which only has about 50 lines of code, where the biggest difference from text view is that it uses a distinct default style. If you're making your own custom view though, what does it mean to add support for default styles? To understand that, let's take a step back and revisit how view attributes are resolved. Burger view has two custom view attributes, include lettuce and source. They're both declared in a values resource file within the burger view styleable. Using the styleable helps us in two ways. First, it'll generate an interrate of the attributes, which we'll need in a moment. And secondly, it'll help Android Studio give us hints when we're using this view in an XML layout. The next thing we have to do is read the values of these attributes so that we can use them. In the constructor for burger view, we can use the obtain styled attributes method on context to get a list of our custom attributes and their values. The first parameter, attribute set, is a map of all the attributes that were set on the burger view element in the layout. So this will include our custom attributes, if they were set, Android layout width, Android layout height, which are set on every view, and I'll include the style attribute if we set a style resource explicitly in the layout. The second parameter is the styleable we defi defined before, which sets the scope of the resulting typed array. Since our styleable only contained two attributes, include lettuce and source, the method will return a typed array which only contains two elements. We can access elements of the typed array using named indices that were generated from our styleable. In this case, we're using r.styleable burger view include lettuce to get the value of the include lettuce attribute from our typed array. So this one method is where all the hard work is performed and a lot is happening. So let's go through it again. The burger view style wall is an int array of the attributes for which we want to know the value. In this case, obtain style attributes will retain, return a typed array that only contains include lettuce and source. 
If we wanted our burger view to use an existing attribute, for example, Android text, which could contain the name of the burger, we could add it to this stylable. And now the typed array that obtains styled attributes returns will contain three elements. The attribute set is the set of attributes that we've given to this instance of burger view in our layout. So in this case, we'll have four elements in our attribute set, Android layout width, Android layout height, app include lettuce and app source. If we added some random key value pair, then this would also be included in the attribute set. But since our burger view nor any of its ancestors knows about this attribute, it'll be ignored. In any case, when we call obtain styled attributes, we've limited the search for the attributes which are defined in the burger view stylable. So our typed array won't include Android layout width, layout height, nor the undeclared attribute. If the style attribute is given, this will also be included in the attribute set. We don't have to worry about it. The obtain styled attributes method handles it for us. It knows we're looking for two particular attributes, include lettuce and source. So first it checks the attribute set for these attributes. And if it doesn't find it here, then it'll look in the style resource, if one is given. That's why attributes specified in the layout will override attributes from a style resource. And finally, we also have to consider the context. The last place that the obtain styled attributes method will look for the attributes we've requested is in the theme. So if it can't find include lettuce or source in the attribute set, and it can't find them in the applied style, or there was no style applied, it checks the theme. This works, but it's pretty weird. We wouldn't expect to find view attributes, which are attributes specific to a particular view in the theme. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. So where do default styles fit in? While passing the default style attribute to the superclass constructor is important, that only adds default style support for view attributes that ancestors of burger view knows about, like Android background. That's because we also need to pass it to the obtain styled attributes method. There's an overload which allows passing both the default style attribute and the default style resource. Now, if a default style is specified with the default style attribute in the theme, it'll also be checked for our custom attributes, include lettuce and source. The last parameter, default style resource, is only used as a fallback, either when the default style attribute is zero or it, no style has been set for it in the theme. And that's it. So let's sum up. Leverage default styles in your themes to pr help promote consistency and reduce boilerplate for commonly used views. Look for the toArg view constructor, since this is where the default style attribute for a given view will be specified. And remember to add support for default styles in your custom views. If you have any questions or comments, reach out on Twitter. And if this video was helpful, please do share and remember to like and subscribe below.